Welcome to Eurocrypt 2021. So in this talk, I will present the paper on the ideal shortest vector problem over random rational primes. And this is a joint work with Dr. Penn, Dr. Xu, and Dr. Wedling. So this research is closely related to the lattice-based cryptography. <clears throat> uh, so this lattice-based cryptography is very popular recently because it has several very light nice property. For example, it is quantum resistant and uh, also it allows fast operation. Uh, in lattice-based cryptography, uh, the, the, the operation is usually just addition and multiplication or small numbers and no exponentiation. <laughs> and then it also have uh, hard, worst case hard list. <laughs> so this is um, very, very interesting, but it has, it does has a problem since no dimensional lattice property is usually easy. So this need some key size problem. That is why uh, we want to use ideal lattice. So using ideal lattice hopefully can solve this key size problem. <clears throat> so what is lattice? A lattice is um, giving a linearly independent vector in the real space. And lattice is basically an integral linear combination of those linearly independent vectors. <clears throat> so this, 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 this vector is form a basis for, for this lattice. So we can see uh, a simple picture. Here we have um, an R2, a Euclidean plane. We have two vector and uh, they are integral linear combination would be give you all those points. So the, so lattice is discrete points, periodic discrete points. <clears throat> and there could be other bases going to be generated the same lattice, going to be generated the same lattice. But this, this new base is considered better because they are shorter, especially the red one. The red one is the shortest vector in the lattice. So uh, finding this SVP would be uh, most important computational problem in lattice theory. Uh, and then, and then here we have this this fundamental domain. This fundamental domain, this fundamental domain, and the volume of this fundamental domain is the determinant of this lattice. Determinant of this lattice. <clears throat> so the determinant is uh, measure the size of the lattice. Measure the size of the lattice. <clears throat> So for the shortest vector, uh, we know a little bit about the length. We know some upper bound. So for example, there is a Hermit bound. The length is going to be uh, the Euclidean length going to be less than square root of n time determinant of lattice over one over n. And this is a uniform bound. And then there's a Gauss heuristic which basically says on average, you should have a length uh, square root n over two e pi, and then determinant L bound over n. But this bound is a asymptotic bound. And then there is a Minkowski bound that says that it must have a length less than square root of two n over e pi at determinant to the nth root of the determinant, nth root of the determinant. <clears throat> and then the SVP is shortest vector problem of proximate SVP and the Hermit SVP basically are three close related problem. The undefined vector of length less than lambda one, lambda one is the length of the shortest vector. Uh, that would be SVP problem. Uh, approximation, you can approximate this this problem is, is hard, so, so maybe in some case you want approximation algorithm. So uh, the, the approximation factor will be gamma. <laughs> and then Hermit SVP problem is the problem we're going to 
uh, study in this paper. And basically, we try to find a vector of less, less gamma time determinant, uh, the nth root of the determinant. <clears throat> so as you can see, if gamma is greater than square root of n, then there, uh, there, there exists such a vector. <clears throat> So the idea lattice basically comes from the number field and number ring. So a number field over rational number is basically, uh, you have a QX mod out a irreducible polynomial degree N, a irreducible polynomial degree N. And, the, and then the ring of integer in this field is a, actually a free Z module. So if you see a free Z module, then you, 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 can, you can see that there's a connection to the lattice. <clears throat> so sometimes sometime this ring of energy is particularly nice. Uh, this is called monogenic. Basically means that there exists an alpha such that the, the ring of integer is essentially a linear combination of this power base. <clears throat> so you have a power base <clears throat> which generates uh, the ring of integers. So in, in many cases in cryptography, we like, uh, we like, we like this kind of ring because it's easy to do the computation. <clears throat> so here we have a number field and a number ring, and we want to, uh, make a lattice out of it. Uh, so a, a number field have a exactly any embedding into complex number. So we cross sigma one, sigma two, up to sigma n. And the canonic embedding, you see, we basically send this number field to Cn, to Cn. And, uh, and we essentially just list all its uh, complex embeddings. So we have sigma one a, sigma two a, and sigma n a. And the in, image, which is just a subspace of Cn. And it is also isomorphic to Rn as an inner product space. An example, if you have a Qx mod out x to the fourth power plus one, then for one, you're gonna to send to one, 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 one for complex number. Or if you really prefer a real number, then that would be square root of zero, square root of zero. And for one plus x, you send to one plus z8, one plus z8 to the seven, and one plus z8 to the third, and one plus z8 to the fifth. And you can see that this and this are conjugates with each the other, and this and this are conjugate, a complex conjugate, which is other. And z8 is just e to the two pi i over eight, over eight. <clears throat> So, but then if you insist on real number, uh, then, then, then you just, just write the real part, uh, imaginary part, uh, but you need to put a square root of two factor over there to make sure that uh, they are isomorphic as an inner product space. <clears throat> so there is also a coefficient embedding here that uh, suppose, suppose, the ring of uh, integer is uh, monogenic, then you just send to the coefficient. So for example, again, if for the qx mod out x to the fourth power plus one, and, uh, and uh, we know this is um, can be generated a power base just one x, x squared, x cubed. Huh? So for one, you just send one, zero, zero, zero. And um, if it is one plus two x, just send to one, two, zero, zero. And that's go directly into the integers. So this is this is probably if you design group system, that's the embedding you are going to use. <clears throat> so the idea lattice. There are, so first we can have a principal idea. It's basically generated by single elements like gx. So it's corresponding to to this lattice. So here that you model x to n plus one, hence that, uh, that other vector basically are anti-cyclic. Uh, so you, 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 you doing this cyclical rotation, 
but uh, you change the sign of the first elements. <clears throat> and a general idea can be generated by as a OK module can be generated by two elements. One is the integer, another one is GX. So that means that in addition to this um, anti-signic matrix, you need you need So those prime ideas, they are considered as the points <laughs> because they are also maximum ideas. They are considered points. So you put them, those points together to and here that, uh, that Z again is just a straight line. So the point is basically a rational primes. And then there are primes lie over those rational primes. So for example, here that uh, we have a rational prime P and then there are two point, there are two point. But you can see that uh, this is this is like a tangent. So, so basically you have a P1 square and P2 square. And in this case, we call P is a, a ramified prime, ramified prime. And there are only finite many prime which will be Ramified, so we don't we don't consider uh, we don't we don't need to worry too much about those prime ideas, and then there are rational prime going to split completely into into four different in this case four because the extension degree is four so these four distinct prime ideas so those those again this is the case. And uh, we, we, we think would be the most difficult case. <clears throat> and here that uh, you have two prime ideas lie over P. So, so those prime ideas, they each have actually have degree two. So they are, so that's why I use a, a large dot to represent them. And those prime ideas are actually uh, not difficult. Those prime ideas, the SVP problem for them are not difficult, <clears throat> a lot difficult. Well, this is not as difficult as those small dots. So the reason that the, the reason is because this decomposition field. So, so basically, we actually can have a very interesting subfield. Subfield. So, so here let G be the Gawa group of L over Q. The decomposition group D is basically the elements in the Galois field, Galois group, which fix this prime idea set wise. <clears throat> and then K is a decomposition field, is essentially the subfield corresponding to that group. And they have uh, uh, those, 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 those group and field have, have these two properties. If P is unramified, then D is isomorphic to the Galois group of OL over P1. The OL over P1 is an extension of the of finite field. <clears throat> so, so this Galois group is essentially going to generate by a single elements, the forbidnings, the forbidnings. So that D is going to be a cyclical group. <clears throat> and, uh, and if the prime idea is generated as the OL module by P and the polynomial degree N over G, then the degree of K, which is a decomposition field of P1, is actually just G. And then and the more interestingly, that the P1 intersection with K, this actually gives you a sublattice. And sub, that sublattice have a, have a determinant, which is basically P, which is this basically P. So, so, so this is, this is this, 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 that's the reason that if D is non-trivial, then, then the difficulty of SVP is get get decreasing if you can move move to this smaller field. So, so this this picture is going to make things even more clear. So here you have a prime idea which you want to find a shortest vector, and uh, and because suppose there is a non-trivial 
non-trivial <coughs> decomposition group, then then this this field would be a, a subfield of L, a non-trivial subfield of L. So here you have this C would be a lattice would be a lattice in this smaller field, so it has a smaller dimension. The dimension is just G, <coughs> and and it's it's the determinant is just p, so so the shortest vector in C, which again will be a very short in p, uh, which will be very short in p. So so this is you can think this is again a subfield attack that uh, is just you are using this decomposition field, decomposition field, <coughs> decomposition field, <coughs> and then and then the map between this C G and C N is. Uh, this beta, it's very simple, very simple. <clears throat> Just repeat the coordinates <clears throat> if, if you're using the colonic embedding. So the main theorem, this is our main theorem. The main theorem, suppose L over Q is finite Galois extension with degree N, and suppose P is a prime ideal, lie over unramified rational prime. And if K is a decomposition field, then the solution to this Hermit SVP with factor gamma in the sub lattice and the colonic embedding will also be a solution of the Hermit SVP in P with a factor um, which is not very far away from gamma under a colonic embedding. So, so basically that this doesn't tell you to, to find SVP, you can simply just find the SVP in a, in a smaller the decomposition field as known as this decomposition group is not trivial. <clears throat> okay. And then here that you have this, in this theorem, you have this complicated complicated factor, but for part of two, syctomic field, which has been quite popular in cryptography, uh, uh, the, the thing, the situation is actually simpler simpler that uh, that you can you can simply uh, depend on the prime whether it's congruent to one or three you can calculate the number r and uh, so the, so the, the dimension of the lattice uh, the real dimension would be just two to the other rather than two to the n since in lots of cases n is much bigger than r so so that's that's going to make Makes this prime ideal SVP prime much easier. So especially, especially if P is congruent to plus minus three mod eight. In this case, that you uh, the real dimension is actually just uh, it's just two. So you just need to solve uh, SVP for the dimension two, and uh, and we know for dimension two. Uh, you can just simply use Gauss reduction. <clears throat> so, so this basically show that for the prime ideal lie over uh, a rational prime, which is congruent to plus minus three mod eight, uh, those prime ideal SVP is very easy. It's very easy. And, the, and we have this kind of hierarchies that if the prime is plus minus three mod eight, then the dimension is just two. And if it's plus, Minus seven more sixteen, you just need to solve a SPVP problem uh, for dimension four. And then if it is uh, plus minus fifteen more thirty-two, the real dimension is just eight. So it's not going to be capital N could potentially be very large, uh, but just eight. So so this so basically says that uh, for half of the prime. Uh, for half of the rational prime, the prime ideal lie over those rational prime will be extremely easy. Huh? And then uh, just to make him two. Huh? So, so you can see that there is a hierarchy of difficulty and uh, the difficulty actually changes pretty big. Huh? So it go, uh, it's actually the double of the dimension every time you, you, you go, uh, it's, you, you cut the dimension every time you, you move up <clears throat> of this hierarchy. So then what is, what is the average case complexity of prime ideal lattice SVP? Well, 
it's going to be depend on how you how you select your prime ideals. So if that you first try a random rational prime and then find your prime ideal night over this rational prime, then your prime SVP problem is, is, is easy. So average case complexity is easy. And uh, so similarly that if you just, uh, if you just uh, again, again, uh, choose prime ideal um, according to the, the, the rational prime uh, downstairs, then, then it's easy. But, but again, if you choose your prime ideal according to, according to its determinant or, or norm, well, in that case, our, our, our work will not apply, will not apply. So, so the average case will be still open problem. So again, for the composite idea, so those idea who are not prime ideas, we also have have result. Again, it depends on the prime, uh, the downstairs, the rational prime downstairs. Basically, uh, the take home message for this paper is that that the prime downstairs actually determine the difficulty of the prime idea upstairs, upstairs, okay. So open problem, which we find very interesting would be that um, uh, to determine the length of the, to de determine the exact length of the shortest vector, lie over rational prime, which a lot of congruent to plus minus three mod eight. For, for the plus minus three mod eight, we have determined exact length uh, of the SVP. Of the shortest vector. And then again, of course, the 